Hello everyone! Hi Grizzlies! Welcome back to another live stream with me, Gizzela K. This is Grizzly True Crime, and today we take ourselves to Oklahoma in Kansas. Okay, hold on. Please note that this content is for adults only. Viewer discretion advised. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe, like, and share. Welcome to another live stream with me, Gizzle K. This is a case out of Oklahoma we're going to look at today. Welcome to all my moderators, patrons, members, subscribers, to all the locals that are here. There's already quite a few locals uh, that have emailed me about this case. Thank you so much, everyone, for the emails and your uh, information that you shared. I really appreciate it. And welcome to anyone who's new to the channel. I hope that you will consider subscribing and becoming part of this community. Okay, so are we ready to dive into this case, which escalated very quickly yesterday? I've been following it since these two ladies went missing. I'll show you exactly who now. But then it went so quiet. It was like, they're missing. They found their car. Suspected foul play, quiet. And I'm like, what happened? And then yesterday, I was uh, busy scrolling on X, and then I suddenly saw SWAT teams being deployed, police vehicles, a lot of activity, and bam, four people were arrested. I'm like, what? Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're going to have a look at everything that we know so far. Uh, if you have any information that you want to share to add to the information that I have, uh, or if, you know, if you're local, you've got local knowledge or something, please do share it with me in chat. I'll, keep, I'll do my best to keep an eye on the chat as well. Uh, thank you, Gerda. I really appreciate it. Okay, so I just put this on the map just so that we can see we're going from Hugerton. Hugerton, did I say it right? I've heard it said many ways. Yucatan, Huggerton, Yucatan, Yucatan, uh, in Kansas, and going to Oklahoma, rural Oklahoma, okay? So I know people say it's not rural Oklahoma, the whole of Oklahoma is rural. Not the whole of Oklahoma is rural. This is like rural, rural Oklahoma, like really in the middle of nowhere, all these farmlands and everything. Oh my goodness, I've been driving around here a little bit. Okay, so let me get my presentation for you, and let's get into this timeline before we look at clips, maps, and what we can find, okay? All right, so Veronica Butler, only 27 years old, shame, and Jillian Kelly, 39 years old. Okay, they were last seen on March 30th of 2024, driving from Hugerton, Kansas to rural Oklahoma. So I'm just quickly sharing the tip line because, you know, some people, they, they quickly check to see what's happening over here and then they leave. So just please make sure if you are from the area or you saw something or you know something, just take note of the numbers to call, the tip lines. You can uh, contact OSBI at tips at OSBI.OK or 1-800-522-8017. Or Never underestimate how just a small bit of information can go a very long way. As we saw, you know, recently in Madeline Soto's case, I mean... From a tipster calling in what they assume maybe what if people know this but let me just call it in anyway after a press conference and that really helped them find Madeline Soto's body now unfortunately in this case they are this is a recovery mission now to find these ladies bodies because of evidence of foul play um, they have shared uh, news reports have shared that they believe that the women were shot and so that you know based on everything that I know so far um, it would seem that there would be evidence of them being then shot near their vehicle where the vehicle was abandoned. Okay, we're going to get into that. So this is just a quick overview. It's also in the description box if you just want to refresh her throughout this live stream. 27-year-old Veronica Butler and her friend, 39-year-old Jillian Kelly, were last seen on March 30th of 2024, making their way to Oklahoma to pick up Veronica's two children, aged six and eight, from her in-laws, to take them to a birthday party. It was actually her daughter's birthday. Her daughter turned six on that day. So can you imagine how excited Veronica must have been to see her daughter and wish her happy birthday and take her to a birthday party? Veronica was going through a bitter divorce and custody battle with her ex, Wrangler Carl Rickman, and Jillian was accompanying her for a custody exchange of the children. 
I must say, from everything I've read so far, it would be more accurate, I think, to say that Veronica was going through a bitter divorce, well, she was through, through a divorce and a bitter custody battle, but more with Wrangler's mother. I mean, Wrangler's mother, so that would be Veronica's mother-in-law, is a massive red flag in this case, and one of the four that was arrested, okay? So, the two women, traveling from uh, Hugoton, Kansas, were going to a rural part of Oklahoma to meet the children's grandmother at this abandoned building, like a, like a, it looks like an abandoned gas station? But anyway, it's called Four Corners, um, you know, so I wonder if that's where they usually met, or if this was a particular day where they said, meet us over there, right? We just don't know yet. Then they said Wrangler, uh, the, Veronica's ex, was actually in prison for possession of a firearm, and he'd been released 14 days prior, but he was booked into a court ordered rehab. So he was five hours away at the time. Uh, so he's not involved in this at all, from what we know. Just 10 days before Veronica and Jillian went missing, Veronica had filed a petition in court for more visitation rights with her children, and she was seeking, she said her goal was to seek full custody. Their abandoned vehicle, so the one that Veronica and Jillian went, was discovered near Highway 95 and Road L, just south of Elkhart, Kansas, a rural community near the Oklahoma border by Texas County deputies, and detectives said that they suspected that there was foul play involved in their disappearance. An endangered missing advisory was issued by Texas County authorities on March 30th. This is just an overview. We're going to break this all down, okay? On April 13th of 2024, four arrests were made. That's what I'm saying. It really escalated quickly. My goodness. Uh, Miss Holmes also says, yes, Gisela, it seems the grandmother is the push behind this whole sick situation. And Wrangler has another child with another lady. And that lady's also posted on Facebook saying that she also had big problems with this particular family. If I had to really read between the lines, I'd be like, with the mother. <laughs> just from everything I've read. But that's just speculation, okay? So, yesterday, April 13, 2024, four arrests were made. The OSBI identified the suspects as 43-year-old Tad Burt Cullum, 54-year-old Tiffany uh, McCall Adams, 50-year-old Cole Earl Twombly, uh, who's known as the butcher in the area. I say it like this because people say his nickname is like the butcher, but he actually is a butcher in the area. So that's pretty scary, given that they haven't found the woman's bodies yet. I don't want to speculate anything like that. I've just seen people saying like, oh dear, he's the butcher. So that that's it's just scary if you think of all the possibilities, right? So, and 44-year-old Cora Twombly. I'm going to show you the mug shots. We're going to look at everything. All four individuals were booked into the Texas County Jail. And see, they were charged with two counts of first-degree murder each, two counts of kidnapping, and one count of conspiracy to commit murder in the first degree. The women's bodies are yet to be found. Anyone with information regarding the case is asked to contact. Again, there's the tip line, okay? So, I will show you on the map as well, um, as far as I could map out, just where where this all happened, all right? Here's some mug shots. Okay, we've got some mug shot time. So Tiffany Mikhail Adams, I actually think it's, I can't remember now if it's spelled like this or the other way, but this Tiffany Adams, 54 years old, is the grandmother of Veronica's children, you know? So her son is going through a divorce with Veronica. Veronica and this lady, it's supposed to be Veronica and Wrangler of battling for custody over the children but many documents have just been sealed that were available you know <laughs> up to yesterday or so many documents have been sealed some little snippets were posted on facebook and i was able to see some of that i can't find them all again now and if they sealed they sealed i respect that from the court but even wrangler her son was complaining that she is not even letting him have visitation rights <laughs> like she is very possessive over all her grandkids, but to the highest degree from what I can read. Allegedly. Of course, take it with a grain of salt. It's from social media. That's not confirmed, but from everything I'm seeing reported uh, by locals, people who know these people, they're like, whoa, this grandmother is like, those children are mine, including an ex saying the same thing. Wow. So this is uh, Tiffany Adams, 54. On the right, top right is her boyfriend, Tad Burt Cullum. 43 okay and then at the bottom there's these two and i'm like well, how do these two fit in who are these two that's call earl twombly 
the butcher, and his uh, girlfriend, Cora Twombly, 44, and apparently they've been in a relationship for eight years. So there's our mugshot time, okay? Now, we'll find out a little bit more about Veronica now. I just quickly want to show you so that you have a good visual of the map. Veronica and Jillian, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about them in a moment, were actually coming from this Hugoton area. This is where, well, Veronica actually went to school in this area, uh, very close to where her car was found abandoned. She graduated there in 2015. But she was living here in this Hugoton area. And Jillian and her husband were also in this area, but had recently opened a new church because Jillian's husband is a pastor. Okay, so Jillian, who is going along with Veronica to supervise, okay, she is one of the four court-appointed supervisors for these custody exchanges and custody visits. Apparently her and her husband, Jillian and her pastor husband, are two of the four people listed. And so they were traveling from this area to go and pick up the children, you know. So then Jillian, Veronica and Jillian were driving, and it's not far. I mean, the whole journey now is an hour and a half because of everything that I've put here. But it's a 45-minute drive to where they were going to meet up with the in-laws. So you know what I mean? With Wrangler's mother? Because Wrangler was in court-appointed rehab. He was checked in on March 22nd. This was on March 30th when they started driving. So I would assume that Veronica, and I'm assuming, but I would assume that Veronica knew that there's not going to be an exchange with Wrangler. Maybe that was the usual. This is going to be meeting with that mother-in-law. And apparently they were meeting at this this area here, which if I just put the little Google man here quickly, put him. <laughs> if we look around here, it's very, very rural, yes, very desolate, okay, wide open spaces. And apparently they were supposed to meet at this area, is what I'm seeing reported. This area, um, there's a reporter called Laura, wait, Laura Ingle from News Nation was standing right here and she said this is where they were supposed to meet up so what can we learn from this you know we like to ask ourselves that in cases yes yeah, Stefan remind everyone to buckle up I'm driving now <laughs> myself and that Google man we are busy driving now so what can we learn from this Ooh, when it's bitter divorces and custody battles and a red flag mother-in-law and all of this just make sure you meet in public places because of course Veronica took someone with her that's the right thing to do don't go alone, but also make sure you meet in a public place, like where there's lots of people also around. Now, lots of people around in this area is going to be very, very difficult. And maybe they thought it would be safer to meet like at this neutral place rather than at the grandmother's house or something, right? So, yeah, this is where they're supposed to go. But they apparently, the police say they don't believe they ever made it there. Could they have made it there? And then the car was placed elsewhere? Maybe. Uh, the car was apparently, where is this? The car was found here, abandoned, off a dirt road on this road called Road L. Damn, so if you zoom in, <laughs> finding Road L, I was just like going down every single, because they said from this uh, Highway 95, Road L. So you got to <laughs> zoom in and find all of the all of the roads, okay? Drive it all, it's a wild ride. But look how, look how wide open this area is, okay? So the car, I actually, I actually think it was found to the west. But off on a dirt road, so we're going to put the little Google man here again. Just to look around. Yeah, so there's there's that dirt there. Wait. I think it's off this way. A thousand feet away from this main road. Just abandoned there with signs of foul play, which they say were puddles of blood outside of the vehicle. I've seen on Facebook people also say that they heard there was a window smashed or there were gunshots through the windows or things like that. I don't know. But if it's being reported that they were allegedly shot, there must be some evidence of that. And that might explain why we haven't seen... You know when you see so many volunteer searchers out searching for people? We're just In this case, there hasn't been a lot of that. So it seems like from very, very uh, early days, the, the police... You know, they knew this was going to be a recovery mission. But of course, they were investigating. The FBI also joined in, right? Okay, so that is 
I hope this is helping so you can visualize. So the two ladies were driving from that Hugoton area, right? Driving there, supposed to meet up there. Where does the grandmother live? Here. The grandmother lives at this big property here. Well, I think it's big. It looks pretty big. It's a farm. Right? So this is the grandmother's property. So maybe they thought, we're not going to meet her there. That makes sense. Right? And especially because Wrangler wasn't there at the time. So it would just be the grandmother and her boyfriend. Maybe the two friends were there too. I don't know. But anyway, this is the grandmother's house. And then her boyfriend lives around here. That's from public record. Okay? So now you've got a map. Okay? Now, let's go back to this so that you just can visualize as I talk you through it. Um, so let me just quickly say what uh, Jennifer said. Veronica and the father, Veronica and the father when married, he's married to the other woman who he has another child with. Interesting. Uh, Bertie said, Cole is not the butcher. He's the, huh? He's the, pa he's the pastor for God's misfits cult. It appears sovereign citizens. The butcher is Cole's son, Frank's wife's family. <laughs> Very interesting. See? Locals in chat giving us all the tea because I don't know. That's what's being reported. Obviously, small town, very small town. Locals, we need knowledge from you. All right. So now Veronica Butler. Okay. Veronica Butler graduated from high school in Oklahoma in 2015, very close to where her car was found abandoned on March 30th of 2024. She was part of the class of 2015 and was a class of one that year, meaning that she was the only senior graduating. On social media, friends describe her as loving. Uh, she loves, loves gardening, cooking, baking, and being kind and great with kids. In 2015, she opened a custody case, which was closed a month later. Then, that's why I'm confused with Bertie saying, oh wait, who said? Jennifer says Veronica and the father were married. Interesting, so they're just battling over custody, okay? But they, damn, okay. What's being reported out there is that they're going through a divorce, but okay, so they're going through a separation. Or I don't know what. They're, bat they're battling custody over the kids, right? And so that started in 2021, according to court documents, uh, with this wrangler called Rickman, the father of her two children. Now, Wrangler's mother had the children, and she was also involved in the custody battle, very much, very much. And between Veronica, Wrangler, and Wrangler's mother, there's a lot of mud being flung between there's accusations from all over right so wrangler's mother is saying that veronica exposed um, her children to sexual abuse and like a drunk uncle and all kinds of things and then veronica saying things about the grandmother and it's all it's all documented but sealed now so it's it really does sound like a very messy custody battle okay uh so I'm not too sure how Wrangler's mother got custody exactly of the children, why she was the one to take care of them. I know that they said, um, again, I'm just reporting what's on social media and being reported by mainstream media so far. We're waiting to see if there's a press conference or something, maybe soon, I don't know. Um, but they said Wrangler struggled with substance abuse. And so, you know, I don't know if the courts would then say, okay, maybe then the kids must be with Veronica and then who knows? I don't know then why the kids were given to Wrangler's mom. But either way, the kids were staying with their grandmother, their paternal grandmother, right? Now, Veronica would see her children on Saturdays and she would take her... her it's not a friend though. They say... Okay, so the police say that they presume that Jillian is her friend. But really, it's more of an acquaintance is what I'm seeing from people who know the two. They say they're acquainted and that Jillian was you know, by court order, a super, she was sup a supervisor for these um, visits, you know, with her children. So shame. And she was actually, she was going along to do a job. And so Jillian was going along as a supervisor for these scheduled visitations. Now, Veronica was last seen wearing a blue short sleeve shirt, denim shorts, and Hey Dudes shoes. The reason I think it's important to mention that, even though they now believe that the women are, are deceased, is because if anyone's in the area and you find any items, you know, of interest, like a blue short sleeve shirt, denim shorts, or these hey dudes shoes or anything like that, call the police, right? You just never know what evidence could really help, okay? Please like and share so that others can also 
uh, find this information in this episode. Thank you all for being here. So this is a picture up here of Wrangler from Facebook, from his public Facebook profile. So Veronica was pursuing full custody of her children and she had filed a petition to achieve this just 10 days before she disappeared. Okay, Wrangler had been in prison for felony possession of a firearm and he'd been in rehab for six months and he'd been released from prison, they say just 14 days before Veronica and Jillian went missing. So I'm gonna clarify that, that's a bit of a mess. Apparently he had been in prison and then was sent to a rehab. It was a court ordered rehab that he was gonna spend 30 days in. And that happened on March 22nd, okay? So if Veronica went missing, Veronica and Jillian on March 30th, it was on March 20th that she filed this petition for more rights with uh, to see her children, more visitation rights, and said that she wants full custody of her children. And two days later, Wrangler would be checked into a court-appointed rehab, and he is, I think he's still there right now, because it was for 30 days, right? So he's five hours away. Okay. So they say on his Facebook profile that he, in the middle there, by the way, is the, the mother-in-law with the children. Uh, he works at Bixie's Cafe, works at AK Roofing Farm, and at Cullum Farms, which I think is the same surname as his mother's boyfriend. All right. So, we, and he's from Keys, Oklahoma. Okay, so this is just a post from nine years ago when the relationship was still going very well, of course. And Wrangler said, yes, ma'am, I've got the most amazing girl ever. She's so damn gorgeous. You should meet her sometime. She's so beautiful. Ugh, I'm beyond blessed. She's beyond special. That word doesn't even come close to describing her, not even in the same ballpark. I love you too, Veronica, more than you'll ever know. Shame. So here we go with a more accurate timeline. As I've just, we're going to go over again. On March 20th of 2024, Veronica filed a petition for the court to grant her more time with the children, stating that her goal was to have full custody of her kids. Veronica and Tiffany, the mother-in-law, were not getting along at all during this custody battle. Wrangler entered a court-ordered rehab facility on March 22nd, five hours away where he would be for 30 days. Okay, so here's the battle between... A snippet I found, because remember, the court documents are now sealed. But there's still this little article out there. Little article, right? Okay, so Amy Lee said um, she lost custody because she moved over state line without permission. Thank you, Amy Lee, for that. Okay. So, yes, Crime Spire says, I'm sure Gisela will get to this because she's awesome, but uh, Tad's property is referred to as the compound of sovereign citizens calling themselves God's misfits. I did hear that as well. But that I've only seen and heard, yes, from social media, so I'm not too sure. But okay, maybe... I, I don't know. It makes sense with all the, the SWAT vehicles and everything. They probably thought these people might be... They might really be armed, right? And not like the police very much. Okay, so... Veronica on the left and Tiffany, the mother-in-law on the right. So in a motion filed in the Cimarron County Court in Oklahoma last November, Tiffany Adams, that, and that was from November, apparently from 2023, Tiffany Adams, the children's paternal grandmother, opposed any adjustment in the supervised visitation arrangement that Butler had with the children, noting that the children had been exposed to sexual abuse while under her care. That's according to the mother-in-law. So don't, don't take that as fact. It's what the mother-in-law is saying. The motion alleged that the children's father, Wrangler Carl Rickman, was a drug addict who had no interest in caring for his children. It noted, however, that he trusted his mother more than he trusted Butler to protect the children. The petitioner appears to be capitalizing on the indifference that Mr. Rickman has shown for his children. Mr. Rickman has removed himself from the children's lives. Instead of being a father, he now seeks out the pleasures of drinking alcohol, using drugs, and other degenerate behavior, the complaint explains. When he left the children, he left the children in his mother's care, not in the petitioner's care. The reason for this is twofold. First, it would have been a violation of the court's order, granting Mr. Rickman temporary emergency custody for him to leave the minor children with the petitioner. This is because, and the point cannot be stressed enough, petitioner's brother has been found to have sexually abused the minor children by this court, and the petitioner has been found to have violated the no-contact order, prohibiting the minor children from being around the petitioner's abusive sibling. It adds. So you can see there's like accusations 
from both sides. Oh my goodness, big time accusations, right? I hope the children are okay now. I'm not too sure where they are. I know everyone will ask that. Where are the kids? Where are the pets? Who's where? I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. So the second reason they say is because obviously Mr. Rickman trusts Ms. Adams with the children more than he trusts the petitioner with the children. Big, messy custody battle. Okay, so just want to show you a little bit of a glow down here. So this would be uh, Tiffany and her boyfriend. Okay, Tad Cullum. He's got a farm, and I think that Wrangler worked there a little bit. So we're trying to piece this all together, right? Uh, Rainy, thanks. You're an OG. You've been here since Gappy Potatoes case. Oh my goodness, from the very beginning. Thank you so much. Okay, and there's the mug shots now. Wow. Okay. Uh, one man stress says, I've been ignoring this case till you picked it up. Thanks, G, for looking into this. Oh, thank you for being here. I've been watching this case, but there was just so little. And then yesterday, I'm like, what? <laughs> Well, that kept me awake. I was like, and then, and then the SWAT vehicles and police and what? And then they're saying, we have a warrant for your arrest. And it was very dramatic, very scary. Uh, you know, they told the media to back up and suddenly we heard, wow, four people were arrested. So these are two of the four that were arrested. We've seen the other two friends of theirs. Okay. So who is Jillian Kelly? That is the lady that was traveling with uh, Veronica, right? So it was Veronica, Jillian traveling from Yucatan in Kansas to Oklahoma. <laughs> I always trying to visualize the map. It's right here. I could see it just in case I get lost. Okay, so Jillian, 39, is the wife of a new minister at Willow Christian Church in Nebraska. He was previously a pastor at Hugerton First Christian Church in Kansas, which is the same area as the church that Veronica attended. Jillian works as a secretary at Hugerton First Christian Church and runs all of its children's programs. Jillian is a mother of four children. Shame. She was last seen wearing whitewashed blue jeans, a long sleeve shirt, and tan or beige shoes. Also items to look out for if you are in the area. If you find anything like that or anything suspicious, call the tip line. So Jillian is described as an acquaintance of Veronica's and was listed as a supervisor or chaperone for Veronica's visits with her children. The Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, which is what OSBI stands for, Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, said that they presume that the two are friends. But from what I've seen on social media, people say, no, they're acquaintances, and it was Jillian doing her, her job to go along and supervise these visits, right? Tracy Lambert says, the children are with Veronica's dad. I found out through a source yesterday. Thank you. I hope that they're okay. This, this must be, this, I mean, for all these battles to be going on and the children to be kind of passed around, it's, it's really devastating on them. Very stressful, right? And now, look what just happened now. It's just like, whoa, a grandma and maybe they would call him grandpa, I don't know, are in, are in jail. And then the other two also, the friends and the dads in rehab, the mom, shame, she's presumed deceased. Oh my goodness. So on March 30th of 2024, they, uh, the police issued this uh, endangered missing advisory flyer, an alert. So they left Yucatan, Kansas to travel 45 minutes to Eva, Oklahoma. And it's not such a long drive either. It was just a, like a little, little drive, you know, to pick up the kids and for Veronica to see her daughter and son, but the daughter had just turned six, right? Um, yes, I did mention this, Miss Holmes. I'll mention it again. Jillian is one of four approved supervisors during Veronica's visits with her kids. Yes, I believe it's Jillian and her husband and two others that are approved supervisors, uh, according to the court, for these visits with her kids. So police do not believe that they made it to the meeting spot to pick up the children. Their car was found abandoned on a dirt road about three to five miles from the meeting spot and 1,000 feet off the Oklahoma State Highway 95. Investigators say that there were signs of foul play, which has recently been revealed, uh, reported, as pools of blood outside the vehicle. It is presumed that the woman was shot. Now, I will say that the information I'm getting there is, that is what News Nation is reporting. They say they've got a source that says that there were pools of blood outside the vehicle and that the woman was shot. I saw on Facebook as well, someone saying that there was a hammer lying outside the vehicle. Uh, the window was broken and it looked like there's been shots fired around the I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what the evidence is, but there would be a reason that the police are saying that they believe, you know, now they're going to look for their bodies, right? 
Shame, my goodness. Uh, she, Jukester, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, so investigators yeah, said there were sound, uh, signs of foul play and the FBI also joined in on the search for them. I was trying to find the exact date. To me, what I could find looked like the FBI joined in on, on April 12th. If they did, damn, then it really, they, <laughs> whatever they found really helped because by the next day, the next evening, there were arrests being made, right? So, my goodness. So, yes, here's uh, the information I've already shared as well. Shame, man. Going from an endangered missing advisory to a homicide investigation with those four people arrested, Veronica's mother-in-law and the mother-in-law's boyfriend, and then their two friends as well. On April 13th of 2024, this is when I was, what I would say in South Africa, Piring <laughs> Uch, which means like big eyes last night, just like, Whoa. <laughs> I was just watching this all unfold on X, you know, I was watching um, Nancy Liu and Laura Ingle. I just want to get a name right. Wait. Yeah, Laura Ingle. Sharing all these clips of these SWAT vehicles. I'll show you those clips as well, but there's a little snippet there for you. Um, let me just quickly see. WTF is going down. It says no broken window rumor. Yeah, I see these are Facebook rumors. That's got to be very careful with it. Very careful. I'm not sure what they have, but they must have evidence that leads police to charge these people with first degree murder, right? Okay. So a convoy of 20 police vehicles, including SWAT trucks. Damn, things got very serious there. They were really ready for a full blown attack, right? Resistance. Uh, a convoy of 20 police vehicles, including SWAT trucks, sped to Tiffany's house, the grandmother. One person was arrested, so they went to two different properties. One person was arrested in Texas County, and three were arrested in Cimarron County. Does anyone know? Let me just quickly see. I was asking uh, earlier, so what are the locals? No, sorry, <laughs> you don't know either. I wonder which one was where. You know? If one was arrested in Texas County, I would speculate... <laughs> the grandmother's boyfriend or what i don't know and then three arrested in cimarron county if anyone here knows who was where let me know because obviously it's the grandmother and her boyfriend and then the other couple so who was staying home for what right anyway so they had to go to the two properties and ar arrest these four people and all four were booked into the texas county jail all four have been charged with two counts of first degree murder, two counts of kidnapping, and one count of conspiracy to commit murder in the first degree, which obviously that would mean they have evidence to be able to do that. As we've seen, as an example from a case we looked at yesterday, Madeline Soto's case, there's no murder charges there yet, right? But here to already swoop in, arrest four people, and charge them with first degree murder, kidnapping and one kind of conspiracy to commit murder they've got evidence they've got something there forensic evidence probably digital as well you know maybe there's emails or something who knows or messages google searches i don't know i just really hope that they're able to recover the victim's remains so that they can be put to rest properly shame man i feel terrible for their families my goodness okay uh, Kathy said, what about Jillian's husband and kids? How are they dealing with this? Shame. Jillian, a mother of four, the husband, a pastor. Uh, man, I've just seen um, clips from the church uh, where they were singing for them and praying for them. I haven't seen since, but that is very, very sad, right? Okay, so on the right-hand side, I have a little screenshot, which comes from Facebook. So again, take it with a grain of salt. But it says, Tiffany Adams' grandma, Tad Cullum, her boyfriend, Cole Twombly, sovereign leader and butcher, Okay. And someone in chat said it's actually his son who's a butcher. I don't know. It just seems like they have a farm and that he's known as the butcher. But okay, maybe it's his son. So Cole, sovereign leader. So they are sovereign citizens um, and Cora, sovereign wife. Okay. Let me just quickly see here. Um, someone emailed, said, and thank you for your email, Cole, who was arrested with the other three, is the local... Uh, cattle butcher in the area so that's what's uh, being said by locals and social media for now we'll we'll just put a pin in that right so uh, true crime chat with crime on the record said according to posts by kirsten rickman the mother to wrangler's other child it seems like she's had her own issues with this family 
So she said, of course, I have a gut feeling due to what I've experienced myself and I have let OSBI know everything I know of or can think of, but social media is not the place to put my speculation out to the public. I'm helping with the investigation as much as I can while keeping my family, especially my children, safe. There was a reason I left Oklahoma, but that isn't for anyone's concern on the internet. Please remember the families are reading everything. Heather Whatever says, I think the arrested grandma had a pig farm. I've heard that too. All of it just sounds extremely scary. Okay, now who's saying what? <laughs> she jukes her. Where are you getting that information? We'll have to check again. I'll check when we look on uh, at Clips and on X now for any other new news. So then they also said it's a scary thing that's going on. And to know Veronica very well and to know from her what she's gone through since 2015. And then to experience it myself, uh, I had to leave. But I'm doing everything in my power to help and get them home because they didn't deserve any of this. Well, that sounds scary. That's Wrangler's ex. So... On the right-hand side is the mother, the mother-in-law. The scary mother-in-law. And apparently, I've also heard from uh, locals that people were pretty afraid of this mother and her boyfriend and their friends, you know, in the general area. So, oh my. Okay. So, anyone with information regarding this case is asked to contact the OSBI at tips at osbi.ok.gov or 1-800-522-8017. 8017. Very important. If you know anything, if you saw anything, if you have any experience with the people they've arrested, any information could help. You just don't know how a small tip could go a very long way. Uh, Queens, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Okay, so let me just check that I'm not missing anything. Hold on one second. Okay, so yes, um, Tracy said the children are with Veronica's dad. If anyone has information that you think could be helpful to add to my presentation, or, you know, if I'm sure there'll be a press conference at some point, and then we'll update ourselves, please email me, grizzlytruecrime at gmail.com, so that I can add that all in. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to forget from all the great uh, information that you're sharing in the chat. So email would be really, really great. Um, so, Lindy says, O-B-S-I, I'm guessing O-S-B-I, reported that Jillian was recovered last night. They were in the process of recovering Veronica, believe both of them. I have not heard that. I have not seen that anyway. Um, let me just quickly go here. And Jillian. Well, now you hear me type. <laughs> Jillian Kelly. I have not seen that anywhere. So I'm just going to... If you have any source for that, like from the OSBI, whatever it is. If I know they were excavating a certain area as well. Any source to confirm anything of them being found. I have not seen anything like that. Okay? So... That is it for my presentation. Now we've got some clips to look at, of course. <laughs> Always lots of clips and things to look at. So let me fetch that for you. All right, we're back here on the map. Let's see here what they said. Uh, oh, so, okay. Here's from the Oklahoma State. I'll actually refresh it just to make sure we're not missing any news. No, oh, there we go. Okay, four arrested. This was 18 hours ago. Look at these people. Oh my goodness. This one's smiling. Look at this guy. He's just like, mm-hmm. Okay. So they said for immediate release, right? 18 hours ago, four arrested in connection to Texas County disappearance case for immediate release April 13th of 2024. Texas County, Oklahoma. On March 30th of 2024. Can you see it? Unless I zoom in a bit more. Maybe I should zoom in a little bit more for you. How about that? <laughs> okay. The Texas County Sheriff's Office requested the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation to in uh, to investigate the suspicious disappearance of 27-year-old Veronica Butler and 39-year-old Jillian Kelly. Their vehicle was found abandoned near Highway 95 and Road L, south of Elkhart, Kansas, in rural Texas County. OSBI Special Agents immediately began investigating the vehicle and determined that there was evidence to indicate foul play. So that's directly from the OSBI, is what they're saying, right? On April 13th, 43-year-old Tad Burt Cullum, 54-year-old Tiffany Mikhail Adams, 50-year-old Carl Earl Twombly, the smiler, the smoker, and 44-year-old Cora Twombly were arrested in Texas and Cimarron counties. All four individuals were booked into the Texas County Jail on two counts of first-degree murder, two counts of kidnapping, and one count of conspiracy to commit murder in the first degree. The OSBI and local law enforcement are still currently working to locate the two victims. So that's why I, that type of information I'm getting from the police, I think there's sometimes, you know, People will report things that might not be so true, <laughs> right? 
That is true. Lucy, Elaine says, Jillian's mother had it on her Facebook that Jillian passed away. Yes, that I do know. I did see that, that um, Jillian's mother said that the police told her that she had passed away. But no one has said that she was recovered, found, or anything like that. I think they're still working on that, right? Right? Okay, so we've got to just be very careful, cautious, not to jump to conclusions because yeah, that would not be accurate then. So... The OSBI and local law enforcement are still currently working to locate the two victims. Anyone with information regarding this case is asked to contact the OSBI at tips. We've already shared that a few times, right? 1-800-522-8017, or you can email that uh, email address. Our agency would like to thank the Texas County Sheriff's Department, the FBI, the Oklahoma Highway Patrol, the Kansas Bureau of Investigation, the Kansas Highway Patrol, and several other local agencies for assisting us with this case. We are protecting Oklahoma one partnership at a time. Hashtag OSBI, hashtag one team, one mission. Okay. That's true as well. AC said, and Jillian's mother said that the granny confessed. Well, that is, I also saw that on social media. So that, you know, it's coming then from one of the victim's families, as in Jillian's mother. Yes. And she said that Jillian has passed away. And she said that the granny, Tiffany, had confessed. But we have to wait to hear as well from what the police say. Sure, I, I just think they, as soon as they obviously are able to find their bodies, which is just sad to say, I'm sure they'll have a press conference to update everyone, right? Or a media briefing like this. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, I want to quickly show you this now, which, let me just make it now. We've got to resize it again. <laughs> Always the resize. I want to just show you the footage that Laura Ingle has shared because it was very helpful. I might actually have to resize again, actually, when I click on it. So she said, heading to Oklahoma, searching for answers in a mysterious case. More tomorrow on News Nation is a report on the two missing moms, Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly, who vanished under suspicious circumstances in a very remote area. I'll take you to uh, the scene. So now it's going to be. I'll take you to the scene of the investigation this week. Okay. And so. Oklahoma City. And see, I'll have to just do this. There we go. All right. And I'm sure we can see some clips in a moment. Car found possible route. And there is this road where the car was found abandoned, right? Now, if we go back, I don't want to lose my place here. Here we go. This is the area that they were supposed to meet up for the visitation exchange. We were just saying that it doesn't look like a very hospitable place for adults, let alone children. And it is in the middle of nowhere. There's no one around. There's obviously no cameras. That's where they're going to meet up. That's what I showed you on the map earlier as well. This Four Corners area. Uh, Alana said, was the car heading away from the meeting place? Um, that's why the police say that they don't think they even made it to the meeting place, right? The meeting place was about three miles further south from where their car was found on that dirt road. So I don't know if they were intercepted or what happened there. Uh, thank you so much for the sticker. Also, Steel Guitar says, this reminds me a bit of the Wagner family in the Ohio massacre. The... Pike Town massacre. Oh my goodness, that case is yeah, and that also started with a a custody battle. If you have never heard of that case, then I do have that. There is a video that I've made before on that case. Somewhere, if you type in Pike Town massacre, grizzly true crime, I think you should be able to find it. So, yeah, the Pike County massacre is what it was called. Okay, so Lauren went there and she was boots on the ground. Uh, she said pit stop in Oklahoma during the solar eclipse. Now here she said uh, taking you to the scene in Texas County, Oklahoma. This was the pickup spot where Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly were supposed to have a supervised meetup with Butler's two children and guardian. They never made it. You could see how rural this area is where the abandoned gas station is. Just pulled off of the road on 412 and we are in Texas County, Oklahoma. We just pulled off of the road 
on 412. Right here, I wanted to show you the Four Corners Grocery and Service Station. This is the location where Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly were supposed to have a meetup to meet her children for a custodial pickup, but they never made it to this location. And it's right down that road, North 95, where we're gonna take you next. And that is where her vehicle was found abandoned on March 3rd. And we are in Texas County, Oklahoma. Okay, and we keep going. Also, um, Linda Mon said in chat, which I'm just going to say it's speculation. We don't know that this is confirmed right now, but you said their daughter, wait, their daughter babysat the kids while the others committed the crime. She gave the, author gave the authorities her parents. Very interesting. I was also thinking if one was arrested in one county and the other three somewhere else, maybe one was with the kids or something. That's very interesting too, right? Oh my goodness. So here, uh, Laura Ingalls said, we spotted this white cross on Road L in Texas County. Let me make it bigger for you. Uh, <laughs> no, I can't read it. I thought about it, but the writing will be on the side. Okay, no, sorry. <laughs> in Texas County, Oklahoma, off Highway 95, where the vehicle of Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly was found, abandoned with signs of foul play according to the OSBI. This is off the highway a good 1,000 feet, why the why was the SUV so far off the main road? I also wonder who put this, who put, who put this there, right? Shame, it's very sweet, I wonder, it's beautiful, look at the little yellow butterflies and flowers and everything with their names on it as well. Okay, so if you know who put it there, let me know. Now, we're going back up, okay. So Laura said on April 10th, the FBI in Oklahoma has confirmed agents are assisting. So April 10th. Oh, okay. I should have paid more attention there. I thought from April 12th. Okay, so from April 10th, the FBI conf will confirm that they are assisting in the investigation into the disappearance of Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. We'll have more information. All right. Now here on location in Oklahoma with News Nation producer Jessica uh, E. Marquez tracking the case of the missing march. Right. So now let's listen to this clip here. Location where the women's SUV Hey guys, I'm here with Laura. We've been covering the story of the missing moms in Oklahoma. We were in Kansas yesterday in their hometown. Um, Laura, could you update us basically of what we've been doing the past four days and what we know and what we're looking for? Yeah, this has been a, a crazy story because we haven't been able to have a lot of people talk to us. Many people are worried about going on camera, friends and family members. The OSBI uh, apparently has told people not to talk to the media. Understandable, there's a lot going on. We have been to the location where the women's SUV was found. Uh, a remote desolate road we've been to the gas station where they were supposed to have this meetup not a lot there very desolate area today we're going back to oklahoma city to talk to the osbi we hope who's given us a very brief statement and talk to a local private investigator about this case all right thank you laura so i'll be adding a little question box if you guys have any questions just let us know we have about an hour ahead so we'll have time to answer them bye hey guys i'm here with laura Okay, so we've seen that. I want to show you all the clips so that you get everything all in one place, right? So here as well, they said, you can see here in this video how far off the highway the SUV Veron Veronica Butler and Julian Kelly were driving was found in Texas County, Oklahoma. What could have caused them to drive down road L 1,000 feet? Or did someone drive it down there for them? And they said, this story is developing today. Stay tuned. Also, somebody was asking... Wait, where is it? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm missing... Who comment now? Someone is saying, who are they? Virginia said, who said that those areas uh, were the places they were to meet? I don't know. Interesting question. Interesting question. Okay, so. And the women's name. So right down at the end of this dirt road is Highway 95. We are on Road L and you can see we're a pretty good distance in. And right down here, we have found a stick with yellow ribbons and flowers. And right over there on that telephone pole is a white cross with yellow flowers and ribbons and the women's name written on that cross. The question here remains, why are we so far down off of this road? What happened that day when they were driving on Highway 95? Shame, okay. So we got that. Look now, uh, Nancy Lou said, developing extraordinary law enforcement activity right now in the Oklahoma Panhandle likely linked to the case of missing Kansas moms, Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. Oh my word.
Oh my word. Uh, also, I see people mentioning in chat a, a creator, I think, called Rock Chalk. I've never, I've, I didn't find Rock Chalk's post. I'm so sorry. But okay, if there were boots on the ground giving updates throughout this, I missed it, man, because I was looking for lots of, like, where's the information in this case? What was happening? It went so quiet for what felt like forever. And then yesterday, as I say, that's what I saw last night. I was just like, what is going on here? Look at all of this. So here they said, uh, oh yeah, Crime with Bobby said, Jillian Kelly's mother posted this on Facebook that Jillian has passed away and the grandmother admitted to killing both women. What? So this is that Facebook post from Jillian's mother that says Jillian has passed away. The grandma has confessed to killing them both. Oh my goodness. Wow. That That is... That is quite something, right? Let's quickly look at Nancy Lou here as well. She was there as well. Boots on the ground. Breaking more from, and that was the four arrested we looked at. Okay, mug shots. That was quite something. Because at first they said four were arrested. And no one knew who they were at the time. Like, who was it? Like, who was arrested? And then I'm like, oh my word, the grandma and her boyfriend and the other two friends. So here, new also booked Cora Gale Twombly. Okay. So this is the jail where they're at now. Texas County Jail. All of them. First, two counts of first degree murder, two counts of kidnapping, and one count of conspiracy to commit murder. Uh, Nancy Lou said, law enforcement kept us back, but News Nation uh, photographer Nate Fiery, Fiery was able to capture some good exclusive footage. All officers seemed on alert, even pulling guns on us as we approached one scene. Oh my word. Yeah. Watching that a few times last night are you good <laughs> it's just like we have a warrant for your arrest and even they went oh my word okay now let me quickly see if we've looked at all of that yes uh, we looked at nancy Lou's post that was there all this footage that they got boots on the ground as well just in tiffany mikhail adams 54 just booked in at the texas county sheriff's office this is the scene at her home right now and there they were i wonder if she really did confess you know to both murders oh my goodness developing osbi tells me they were working on a news release and possible news conference later so they did have a news release we did uh, read that together but there was no press conference yet they might be at a later stage if there is we'll watch it together let me know email me okay and any information because i'm missing a lot of what you guys are saying there's lots of people here yeah mko says oh my word there are 6k in chat so i'm missing a, i can't read six six thousand people's messages <laughs> all at once and i see there's some great information there please email it to me okay uh, grizzly true crime at gmail.com shame these are beautiful pictures they said the four in custody and being held in texas county oklahoma charges pending so identity is not being released you see that's what we're waiting for these are two of the properties in cimarron county where we watched the convoy stopped outside the brick building we heard we have a warrant for your arrest they kept us back so we couldn't hear the name whoa okay that looks like, I think that's the the boyfriend's property, right? Wow. Okay. Interesting. Lots of interesting things <laughs> that I'm seeing in chat that I'm like, where is that from? Send it to me. Send me with a link or something, right? Okay. So we have that. And then we've still got these two clips right here as well, quickly. Us ...from Hugoton, Kansas with the latest. Good morning, Nancy. Sorry. It's me Good and Good morning, my... Hannah. It's sure <laughs> to be an emotional Sunday service here at First Christian Church in Hugoton. This is where... The husband of Jillian uh, Kelly is the lead pastor. The entire community now is grieving following two weeks of hope that Kelly and Veronica Butler would be found safe. While the four under arrest for first degree murder and other felony charges 
54-year-old Tiffany Adams, her boyfriend, Tad Cullum, and Cole and Cora Twombly. The o Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigations is not revealing details about the suspect's alleged crimes or what happened, but a custody fight may be linked to it all. Tiffany Adams is the grandmother of the two children Butler was on her way to see on March 30th, and Adams had bitterly fought against more visitation. A custody hearing was set for next week when Butler was expected to seek full custody. Kelly was among four court-appointed supervisors for Butler's visitations. They never made it to the usual pickups point at an abandoned gas station in Texas County, Oklahoma. Well, that's where our News Nation crew captured this exclusive footage of law enforcement closing in on the suspects to execute the four arrest warrants in both Texas and neighboring Cimarron County. We spotted more than 20 police and SWAT vehicles at one point, following them to various locations outside the Twombly's property. We heard an officer on a loudspeaker announcing, we have a warrant for your arrest. All officers appeared heavily armed and prepared for a gunfight in case of resistance. They also seemed wary of all who approached drawing guns to turn people back, including us. Tiffany Adams and the others are now behind bars at the Texas County Jail. They also face charges of kidnapping and conspiracy to commit murder, indicating they allegedly plotted the killings. OSBI is not providing details on what led to the suspect arrests or their alleged roles in what happened. Now, the agency is also not revealing yet whether they've located or recovered the women's remains. But Hannah, definitely. Shame. Uh, Darlene, thank you for your sticker. I think we read something like this earlier. I'm going to be a little careful <laughs> with speculation. I'm not too sure. It all, all had to babysit the... Okay. So maybe, maybe. I'm sure we'll learn a lot more about this investigation and the timeline, you know, as things go along. And can you imagine this trial? Oh, my word. Okay. So I've shown you that. I just really want to fetch another one. Uh, thank you to MB Inc. for sending me this. Okay. Let's quickly have a look here. Yes. This is Julia Thatcher, local reporter, KSN, in Wichita, Kansas. She said, I talked to OSBI, this is one hour ago. I talked to OSBI this morning. They say Jillian and Veronica have still not been found. This popped up a few days ago near where their car was left abandoned. Okay. So this is from a local reporter saying the OSBI is saying that the two women's remains, Veronica and Jillian, have not been found yet. So we just, that's what I'm saying, with these cases always, and you know, especially when things escalate so quickly, it was very quiet for a while. They went missing, the car was found, and there was no news. We didn't see volunteers out there, like, we saw a couple, a little bit, a little bit, okay. There were two YouTubers out there, then News Nation went out there, but there wasn't like, you know, the activity you might usually see. And it was just quiet. There was no news. I'm like, what is happening? And then yesterday, everything just, obviously, they'd been investigating that entire time. And then those SWAT vehicles pulled in and the police car, the whole convoy, they arrested four people and charged them all with first degree murder. Wow. And kidnapping and conspiracy to commit murder. They must have so much evidence to be able to do that so quickly, actually. So, yeah, this is good information from Julia Thatcher, I would say, a reporter that says she spoke to OSBI. This one, okay, take everything with a grain of salt because we don't know because we've got to wait to hear directly from the police or see some documents or some kind of backup, right? If you guys wouldn't mind not mentioning content creators too much in the chat because the reason is it redirects everyone. Then everyone goes like, oh, let me go look at that and they leave. And that's not good. That's not good for us over here. <laughs> Trying to give you information all in one place. Uh, Oki, Karma, I hope I said it right. Uh, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. Wow, so isn't this case just, it's quite something, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Yeah, Rochelle, uh, thank you for reminding around Butler's children are age six and eight. Wow. Okay. So I think I've actually shown you everything I wanted to show you. There was actually one more clip. What is this clip? Let's see. The evidence that was in the vehicle, was around the vehicle, the condition of the vehicle, all of that is still um, under uh, investigation at this time. Not, not a lot of buildings, not a lot of homes, no cameras. It's, it's made it extremely challenging, but that's why we stress again that if you know something, please say something yes. and please reach out to us. Oh, it's See, if you know something, please say something and reach out to them. That's what they need. If you have any information, let me know. If you are local and you want to share information with me, sorry for all the sparkles on the side here, uh, please email me, grizzly 2 at gmail.com. I do protect all my sources. I keep all my sources anonymous, okay? So I'm not going to be like, so, 
this person who lives like right next door told me this and this. Okay, I'm not, I won't say that. But if you want to send me information, if you think it might be of interest to, I don't know, add to a presentation or to think about, then let me know. Um, any tips and things like that, please send it to the police. I've shared the tip line multiple times. It's also in the description box and everything. And I really hope, uh, you know, I'm so devastated for the families and friends and especially all the children. Oh, no. Um, I really hope that they will be able to find their bodies because from all the, the farm activities and the large properties they have, I think it's going to be pretty difficult, but I have full faith that they will be working very hard on it. And I really hope that they find them so they can be put to rest um, in a dignified way, right? So thank you so much, everyone, for being here with me. I just quickly want to check one more time if I have missed anything. Again, thank you to Matt Black MB Inc. on YouTube for sending me that update from an hour ago. So Sugar Magnolia said, I strongly feel that one or more of them were on a watch list. They came out in such force that we may learn a lot more about these folks. That's true as well. That's a good point. Who knows what else they know about them, right? Um, Peyton said, shame on the court for ignoring the grandmother's threat to kill that is documented in court records. You make a good point. I did read that somewhere. Of course, they've sealed a lot of the court documents, but they say that that grandmother said, if I don't get custody of these kids, you're going to see dead bodies. And I'm like, whoa, she actually said that in court? Is it apparently documented? I mean, that is very, very scary. And yes, Lizzie Wiz said, I read on a newspaper that Veronica lost custody because her her brother, her other brother, sexually assaulted children, something like that. I don't know. That sounds like, I don't know. That rumor, I don't know about. But uh, someone said that she lost custody because she crossed state lines without permission because she'd moved to Kansas. She was in Oklahoma. Am I right? So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, Crime Spy says, who can leave Gizla's live stream? They're the best intel. <laughs> we have the best mods here too. <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, I will keep you posted. I've been following this case from the start. I don't cover everything I follow. Of course, I can't cover everything, but I've been following. And this escalated so quickly. And I really hope that uh, we'll hear from the police soon because I know when it goes like this, ooh, speculation goes absolutely wild. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get wild. So buckle up, okay? Whatever you see on social media, just take with a grain of salt, okay? I know I'm included in social media. I do my very best to stick to what police have shared, to the flyers, to maybe what family shared or court documents that I've seen some of. I've downloaded what I could. I'm also going to read through some of those before they're all sealed. So <laughs> I will bring you any news that there is. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I appreciate it. Please like and share so others can also learn about this information. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye.